Happy Sabbath Church. I greet you all in the name of our soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you know that the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, starts with our own beginning? A long time ago, there was nothing, no trees, no people, no animals, not even sound or smell. Everything was completely empty. That's what it was before God created the heavens and earth. My sermon is entitled, Formed by God. Uh, on day one, God created the light day and the darkness night. Day two, God created the sky, and on the third day, he created land and vegetation. On the fourth day, he created the sun, moon, and stars. He spoke, and the sea animals and birds came to existence. But he wasn't finished yet. That was day five. On the sixth day, God spoke to create one more time. He said, let the earth be filled with animals, and it was so. On this very day, something changed. After God spoke and everything was created, he took his own two hands and began to shape something from the ground. He made a human being in his own image and likeness. And then God did something else that was different. He breathed life into this human being. Do you think if I take a doll and breathe, it, and breathe in, it will move? No, that is because God's breath is special. It was his gift to us. The Bible tells us that when God breathed into us, men became a living soul. On the seventh day, God took a step back. He saw that what he had made was very good. God rested not because he was tired, but because he had finished his work. He wanted to appreciate his work and spend the time with Adam and Eve. God set an example for us. We are his precious creation. God wants to spend time with us. He treasures us and he also treasures spending time with us. God blesses the supper day and makes it holy. He set it aside so we could appreciate his creation, connect with him and celebrate his special he made us. Dear church, God created us in his image. God formed us by his own hand. He designed us to bring, God, to bring him glory in a way that no one else can. He has given us good gifts and abilities and he has also given us special talents. As his custom was, Jesus told stories. One of the, one, in one particular day, he gave one story from the book of Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. Often, his stories had different meanings, but particularly in this story, the talents represent a large amount of money. Today, they could be worth a million dollars, a million US dollars. In this story, it, the talents can also represent our different gifts and abilities. Jesus' story begins with a rich man who was going away to a long trip. He decided he summoned his servants and gave them the responsibility to take care of his house, his treasures, and his money. The rich man trusted and believed that they would take care of his belongings, his special, his special valuable things while he was away. He therefore gave five talents to one of his servants. To the other, he gave two talents. To the other, he gave one talent. He gave each of his servants talents according to their abilities. Our abilities are our special gifts that God gave us to use in a way that is different from the rest of the world. Some of us are good at memorizing. Some of us are better at certain sports. Some of us are better at knowing how to help others. Some of us are good in preaching, singing, and even praying. Some of us can solve problems better, and some of us are more generous. Our ability is something special that we have that is different from others. As the story continues, the Bible says, while he was away, while the rich man was away, the servants each did something with their money. The one with five talents went 
away and used the money and got five more talents. The one with two talents used his money and gained two more, but the one with one talent, he decided he would bury the money away. He buried it in the ground. After a nice long trip, the rich man came back and he wanted to know what his servants had done with his talents. He, the first man with five talents said, you gave me five talents. I went and used them, and now I have five more. And the master was happy and replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with little things. Now I will make you faithful over lots of things. Come, celebrate with me. The one with two talents came and said, you gave me two talents and I have made two more. The master also replied and said, great job, good and faithful servant. You were trusted with little things. Now I will make you owner of lots of things. Then the man who had received one talent came and told his master, I know you work hard for your money. I know you love your money. So I was afraid I would lose any of it. I decided to bury it in the ground to keep it safe. The master was not pleased by what this man with one talent had done. He said to him, you lazy servant, at the very least, you could have taken the money to the bank and you would have made some interest of it. He immediately took the talent away from the servant and gave it to the, one, to the first one who had used his money to make more. The point Jesus is making is that if you use your special gifts and talents, then God will give you more chances to use them. He will trust you with so much more and help you to grow your talents. But if you choose not to use them, if you choose to bury them in the ground like the man with one talent did, then you will not even have the chance to use them at all. God considers you very valuable and trusts you to do something. He trusts you to use his gifts and abilities that he has given you today. Maybe you are not sure what your talents are. You can ask your friends, you can ask grown-ups to tell you what they think your talents are. You should listen and watch when others compliment you or notice something good about what you are doing. To you, it might be small, but to God, it is very big and a very special talent that he knows only you can use it properly. Dear church, do you know your talents? You know your talents. You may not know your talent, but God requires us to use our talents in a way that is to the glory of God. He knows our talents and he will help us to make them grow bigger and better. He will help us to use our talents wisely. As Elder Malet is coming up front, dear church, I would like to say, I'd like to appeal to you that allow God to use your talents. Allow God to use your talents in a special way. Give our talents to God. If we are willing to use our talents, then God will use us in a mighty way and in a way that will change the lives of our people today. Dear church, if you are willing to use your talents, if you are willing to, use, to give God your talents, could you please stand as we pray?
Right. 